Section 2.10, solving one-step inequalities by multiplying or dividing. Our division properties of inequalities state dividing each side of an inequality by a positive number, that's our key, does not change the inequality symbol. For example, 4 is less than 6. We know that's true. Divide both sides by the same number, here I chose 2, would give me 4 divided by 2 is 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3, and it's still true that 2 is less than 3. The symbol stayed the same. The same thing as if 8 was greater than 6. 8 divided by 2, we know, is 4. 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 4 is greater than 3. Again, the symbol stayed the same. The algebra version is very similar. Two real numbers, a and b, less than and greater than, divided by a real number, the same on both sides. As you can see, does not change the symbol. But Dividing each side of an inequality by a negative number does change the inequality symbol. Let's take a look to verify. Here I have 4 is less than 6. We know that's true. If I divide both sides, and notice I chose a negative 2, my outcome would be 4 divided by a negative 2 is going to give me a negative 2. Positive divided by a negative is a negative. 6 divided by a negative 2 is a negative 3. If I don't change the sign, I would have a negative 2 is less than a negative 3, which we know is false. Therefore, therefore, proving that I need to change the direction of the symbol. If it's less than, it needs to go to greater than. If it's greater than, it needs to go to the less than. And the same with the greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. So anytime I divide by a negative, I have to flip the symbol. And that shows that in my algebra version. A is less than B, and if C is negative, then A divided by C is greater than B divided by C. If A is greater than B and C is negative, then A divided by C is less than B divided by C. Again, flipping the symbol. Our multiplication properties of inequalities are very similar to the division properties of inequalities. Multiplying each side of the inequality by a positive number does not change the inequality symbol. Here's an example for our arithmetic version. 4 is less than 6. We know that's true. Multiplying each side by a positive 2 is going to give me 8, 4 times 2, and 12, 6 times 2. And we know if I keep that less than, 8 is less than 12 is true. Similarly, for 8 is greater than 6, which is true, multiplying both sides by 2 would give me 16 is greater than 12, which is true. And here is the algebraic version for that. But if I have multiplying each side of the inequality by a negative number, it does change the inequality symbol, just like it does on the division inequality properties. So if I have 4 is less than 6, which is true, I multiply both sides by a negative 2. That gives me a negative 8 and also gives me a negative 12. If I keep the sign, that would state that a negative 8 is less than a negative 12, which we know is false. So therefore, I need to flip the symbol. And that would be the same case if I have 8 is greater than 6, which is true. But if I multiply by a negative 2, I'll have a negative 16 and a negative 12, which I know a negative 16 is less than a negative 12. And here's the algebraic symbols for that. Let's take a look at our first example. Solve each inequality. Number one. 6x is greater than or equal to a negative 32. I start on my variable side, which is the left side of the inequality. I copy the problem, which is going to give me 6x is greater than and equal to a negative 32. Again, we've followed this procedure over and over. Copy the problem from the book. Start on the variable side. I have 6x. What is 6 doing to x? It's multiplying. Therefore, I will divide both sides by 6. Now, stated on the previous slides, I am dividing by a positive number. It doesn't matter that this number is negative. I divided by a positive. And when I multiply or divide by positives, the symbol does not change. So I bring down the greater than or equal to. So here I have 6 divided by 6, which is 1x, or x, and a negative divided by a positive is a negative. 32 is not evenly divisible by 6, but I can simplify. What goes into both would be 2. 32 divided by 2 is going to give me 16. 
and 6 divided by 2 is 3, a negative 16 thirds. So here I have x is greater than or equal to a negative 16 thirds. Again, dividing by a positive does not change the inequality symbol. Number two, I have 16 is less than or equal to a negative 12v. Oh, you know, we pronounce that as a negative 12v is greater than or equal to 16. And I'm going to bring that problem down, just like copying it from the book. And now I start on the variable side of the problem. That is on the right side of my inequality. What is happening to me? It's being multiplied by a negative 12. Therefore, I'll divide both sides by a negative 12. And notice here, I'm dividing by a negative value. When that happens, negative divided by a negative is a positive V. But what happens is my inequality symbol changes direction. And then I simplify the left side. 4 goes into the numerator and denominator. That gives me 4 thirds. And of course, that's negative. And now this is V is less than or equal to a negative 4 thirds. Again, solve each inequality. Number 3. A negative 14 is greater than a negative k. But we know that this is really a negative 1k is less than a negative 14. I start on the variable side, which is the right side of my inequality. And I'm going to divide by a negative 1. Why? Because what is happening to my variable, or k, is being multiplied by a negative 1. Therefore, I will divide by a negative 1 on both sides. That gives me a positive k. Negative 1 divided by a negative 1 is a positive 1. I change the symbol because I'm dividing by a negative. And that's going to give me k greater than a positive 14. Negative divided by a negative is a positive. 14 divided by 1 is 14. Number 4. Copy the problem. 2p is less than a negative 18. Start on the variable side, which is on the left side. What is happening to the p? It's being multiplied by 2. I will do the inverse, which is divide by 2. And when I do that, 2 divided by 2 is a positive 1p. And on the right side, negative divided by a positive is a negative 9. But I am dividing by a positive value. Therefore, when I divide by a positive value, the symbol does not change. It just comes down. So I have p is less than a negative 9. I want to continue uh, solving each inequality. I want to copy the problem. p divided by a negative 3 is less than 7. Start on the variable side, which is the left side of the inequality. What is happening to my variable is being divided by a negative 3. Therefore, I want to do the inverse, which is multiply both sides by a negative 3. And when I do that, a negative 3 divided by a negative 3 is a positive 1p. And here I have a negative times a positive, which is going to give me a negative 21. But I multiply both sides by a negative 3. Therefore, when I multiply or divide by a negative, the ch symbol has to change, which gives me p is greater than a negative 21. Number six, 22 is greater than a negative q over 3. And I decide to move the negative to the denominator. Remember the notation, I can put it anywhere I want. It's a lot easier to put it with the number. Now, what is happening to my variable? Because that's the side I want to start on, the right side of my inequality. q is being divided by a negative 3. I'm going to then multiply by that same value by inverse operation. Something's dividing my variable, I'm going to multiply on both sides. And that's going to give me a negative 3 divided by a negative 3 gives me a positive 1q. On the left side, a negative times a positive is a negative 66. But since I'm multiplying both sides by a negative, my symbol must change. And therefore, that gives me q is greater than a negative 66. Again, I want to solve each inequality. I'm given number 7. One third f is greater than or equal to a negative 3. So I'm going to copy the problem. I'm going to solve this two different ways. So I'm going to copy the problem, which is one third f is greater than 
or equal to a negative 3. I'm going to start on the left side of my inequality because that's where my variable is. I'm going to follow the same rules. Now I'm going to say, what is happening to f? Well, one-third is multiplying f. Well, if something's multiplying my variable, I need to divide. And I need to do that on both sides. But do I know how to perform this operation? One-third divided by one-third. And that's how I say that, one-third divided by one-third. So that's one-third divided by one-third. And if I recall my rules for fractions and division, I bring down my first fraction, which is one-third. I change division to multiplication. And the fraction directly behind my division, I find the reciprocal. It means to flip it. So three is on the bottom. It becomes in the top. And one's in the top. It goes to the bottom. One times three is three over. Three times one is three, which I know is one. So one-third divided by one-third, or a number divided by itself, we know is one. So that becomes F. Since I'm dividing both sides by a positive, my symbol just comes down, which is greater than or equal to. But I now have to perform this operation on the other side. So I'm going to clear some space out, and we're going to work on that. That's a negative 3 divided by 1 third. Follow the same rules. Bring down the first fraction or number, which is a negative 3. I can put any whole number over 1. Change the division to multiplication. And the fraction after my division, I find the reciprocal, which is 3 over 1. I just flip it. Then I multiply straight across. Negative times a positive is a negative. 3 times 3 is 9 over 1 times 1, which is 1, which I know is a negative 9. So therefore, my solution is f is greater than or equal to a negative 9. Let's take a look at the second way of doing this. The second way of doing this would be, again, copy the problem. 1 third f is greater than or equal to a negative 3. Another way to look at this is that I have one-third times f. To eliminate the one-third, all I would need to do is to multiply by its reciprocal, which is 3 over 1. And I could do that as long as I do it on both sides. It doesn't change anything. So now you can see the 3's cancel, the 1's cancel. I end up with just 1f. Since I'm multiplying both sides by a positive 3, I don't change the inequality. So I just bring it down. And over here, I have 1 times 1 is 1, would be the denominator. And a negative 3 times a positive 3 is a negative 9. So I gave you two options to solve this inequality. And as you can see, I both get the same result. Let's do one more. Just repeat that process so we can see how that's done. So I'm going to copy the problem. 18. It's less than or equal to a negative one-half x. Again, what's happening to the x? It's being multiplied, so I'm going to divide by a negative half on both sides. And I'll show that procedure one more time. A negative one-half divided by a negative one-half. Bring down the first fraction, which is a negative one-half. Change the multiplication. And the fraction after my division, I find the reciprocal, which is 2 over a negative 1. Negative times a positive gives me a negative 2. Positive times a negative gives me a negative 2. I end up with 1, which is going to give me just x. Since I'm dividing both sides by a negative, I will flip the symbol. So that becomes x is less than or equal to. And here, clear a little room out. Here I'm going to have 18 divided by a negative 1 half. Bring down my 18. I can put a whole number over 1. Division goes to multiplication. Find the reciprocal of the fraction after my division symbol, which is 2 over a negative 1. 
18 times 2 is 36 over a negative 1, which is a negative 36. That gives me x is less than or equal to a negative 36. And the second procedure is to rewrite the problem, which is 18 is less than or equal to a negative 1 half x. And instead of dividing, I can just multiply by the reciprocal of what is multiplying my x. And of course, I need to do that on both sides. The reciprocal would be a negative 2 over 1, negative 2 over 1. Over here, I have a negative times a negative is a positive, 2 over 2, which leaves me just x. Since I'm multiplying both sides by a negative, I flip the symbol. And that would give me a negative 2 times 18, which is a negative 36. Again, ending up with the same result using both procedures. I don't care which one you would use. And our last two problems, write an inequality for each sentence, then solve the inequality. The quotient of a number z, quotient means division, and a negative 4 is greater than or equal to 5. So we have our inequality. I start on my variable side. What's happening to it? It's being divided by a negative 4, so I'm going to multiply by a negative 4 on both sides. And now I simplify both sides. The negative 4s cancel. Negative 4 divided by a negative 4 is z. And 5 times a negative 4 is going to give me a negative 20. And since I multiply both sides by a negative, I flip the sign. So therefore, that's going to give me z less than or equal to a negative 20. And my last problem, a number p multiplied by 3, remember the coefficient goes in front, is less than a negative 12. Since I'm going to start on the variable side and it's multiplied by 3, I'll divide by 3. And when I do, that gives me p. A negative divided by a positive is 4, and that'll be a negative 4. And since I'm dividing by a positive, the sign stays the same. P is less than a negative 4.